stuff. This is a pool for a therapy pool, which is kind of like a small swimming pool. And we just replaced the heat exchanger over there. And that takes boiler heat and injects it into the pool. So I've got a motor here. The drive over there on the wall says, no, I'm not doing it. It's over amping. It's not happening. They have one already ordered. I found this last week sounded like hell. I know the bearings are going out. What I've tried to do so far was pop the end off. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. It's getting replaced. So I don't really care. Yes, it can be rebuilt potentially. So I stuck my screwdriver in there because that's brass. Tried tapping it in a little bit to see if I can make it turn. It does not want to turn for crap. So I'm thinking, okay, can I maybe get that butt end of this motor off? get it turning a little bit, maybe bypass the drive just to let it go full bore and get it at least running because this is important that it runs. So right now we're gonna try to pop the ass end of the motor off here and see if we can get this thing uh, going. Motors for the most part generally lose their bearings. That's the majority of the problem. I can yank this out fairly easy. You got valves here and there. We're gonna try avoid taking it apart because I don't know what I've got for a seal to reseal that because I don't have gaskets. This is totally unplanned. I was supposed to just make sure that that heat exchanger over there was set right because all the automatic building automation system doesn't work. So let's see if we can get this thing off here. All right, so to take it off here, you can see bearing housing. Let's see how this bearing is. This bearing here doesn't feel horrible. Yeah, our problem is probably something to do with that impeller because for it to turn that much, because that's turning the shaft. I don't think it's the bearing. I think we've got something stuck in the uh, propeller. Now we might be able to get to the propeller through that clean out there. You see that canister right there? Looks like we could probably get to it. Let's see if we can get this thing to turn manually. Maybe we can get it running again. We're just going to loosen this up a little bit. So I don't know what this is going to do. It's gonna make a hell of a mess. Let's get our bag up off the floor. Oh yeah. Doesn't appear to come out at 100 mile an hour, so probably are okay. Let's learn together. I don't work on pools, but I'm not stupid, so generally we'll figure it out. Welcome to my world. Just fix it. That's why I say HVAC is some of the most universal field out there. We do electrical, we do plumbing, we do everything. So that one comes out, the other one stays in. Hmm. I reversed. I don't know if it's on purpose or not. There we go. Oh. Yeah. Lovely. Now, if we have one of those chunks of crap there in the motor, fan blade, that definitely would cause some problems, you know? All right, so we're going down in here in the water. And I don't feel anything in the propeller what I can feel. I mean, you can't get a real good thing on it. I suppose we can try getting both hands on both sides of that thing and turn it that way. I went ahead and tried turning it, and it doesn't want to turn. So I'm going to put this together. We're going to steal one off one of the other systems. we got a jacuzzi pump that we can get around not using, so... Since this valved off okay, we're gonna go ahead and just yank the four bolts, yank it out, unwire it, swap it out. The new one comes, we can put the new one in, put this back on the other. Actually, their maintenance guy can do that, but he's off this week, so um, they're usually who takes care of this stuff. But yeah, we got something going on with that propeller. Now, luckily, and I'm not gonna take this completely loose, Gonna break it a little bit. There we go. We'll just keep that semi hooked on there because we got water. 
probably at least five gallons here. It's going to go all over the place. Get all my goodies up off the ground. Don't really want them all destroyed. So let's just break this thing loose gently. Now we could suck that out with a vacuum, but not too worried about it because there's plenty of water on the floor everywhere else. So we got a little water on the floor. It's going over the drain. Works out well. But we got it. Also allow us a little better look at the propeller. See if we actually got something in it or what's going on. Pop this out and we'll put it up somewhere up here on this area that's for workbenches. Came out fairly decent. I don't see where it's been hitting anything in particular. You can see where it's been wallered out there. So you can get a little bit better. That looks like it's from the factory that way potentially maybe I don't know it's all the way around like that so let's go over here look at this propeller that's not super great you can see the fins are pretty much gone okay so now it would probably spin thing needs a new freaking propeller yeah, that starts spinning for a while. Yeah, let's see. As bad as that right there is the seal. It's an O-ring. So we should be able to get that off there if we need it. At motors, toast to a whole umph degree. Definitely want to make sure your voltage wiring, uh, voltage setup for the right wiring. This is dual voltage. Could do 440 or 208, which according to the wiring, and everything else, it shows that it was wired for higher voltage. T4 and T7. So, T4, T7 ties together right there. And then, T1 goes to line, T5 and T8. And there's 6 and 9, so, 6 and 9, so yeah, this is wired for high voltage. Don't want to put the a lower voltage one on with the higher voltage one. Um, as you can see, this is your spin part of the pump. Here's your seal, and this is just dead space. Nothing technically should be leaking back here to this. Nothing's getting sealed on this particular spot, as far as what I can tell. Because you've got gaps around here. You can see the light. So that's... Got a little bit of grease on the bolts, which is kind of nice. Made it easier to bring out. It doesn't look like anisees. But what we want to take that off of and use is back here. There's all kinds of other goodies. And back here, more contraptions. Lights, no light bulbs. I guess that's as good as it gets. So anyhow, got this one here it actually has working gauges pulling a negative not even pulling negative at all it looks like the same one often make sure here they up to seven and a half horse, so let's go look. See if that's the same one. And this is seven and a half horse. There you go. 13 3460 RPM. Eyesight's gone to hell as far as up close. Sometimes it's a little hard to read without my glasses. Get all that money for LASIK. Still need reading glasses. Because I'm getting old! Looks like power to me. Oh, look at that double feed, and that goes over to the reactor capacitors. Trying to keep the uh, power factor good. Alright, so we got that locked out, ready to go there. Got our Handy dandy impact. Let's get this thing broke loose. That's 
That's on number three. No, that's on number one. There's number three. Oh yeah. A little more juice than what I need. There we go. So we'll break this thing loose and get her out of there. Got the electrical undone, got it wired nutted off. All the one bolt holding it, and we're draining down into the cracks and crevices. Which I'm sure they got concrete or got stone underneath this concrete. So we'll just let this drain down a little bit. Which for the most part we got here to there. And uh by the time the motor gets back, they're making this guy and put it all back together. We're going to go ahead and put his bolts back in the uh, housing there so they don't get lost. Like I said, we got that locked out. So all we got to do is switch this thing over. I did make sure that our diameter is the same. So it should be good to go here shortly. And as warm as it is back here, it should evaporate right out. And it's going right down to that full drain right there anyway, which is awesome. And out it came. Wow, look at all the crap in that one. That bad boy's got all kinds of crap in it. Hopefully, uh, it doesn't continue to leak very fast. But if it leaks a little bit, it's not going to hurt a whole lot. Got us a handy dandy cart here. Just going to coast this thing back over there, slide it back in. The o ring on this looks pretty decent. Looks like a fairly newer motor. Propeller does not look horrible. A little piece of gunk in there. It could be cleaned off. It's probably why the blades got ate off on some of the other ones. Figure it constantly spinning, causing, causing wear, just like a vibration. Oh, yeah. This propeller needs replaced too. Both of them do. But at least it spins freely. I did go through and wipe all of this out with the rag so it's smooth. They don't have a bunch of gunk in there. That there ain't too bad. Looks like they got some sort of plumber's grease on it, which probably was so it wouldn't rust any worse than what it already has. I've seen something on there and it, it surely looks like grease is what they put on it. That's what it feels like. So there's plenty there to keep it from season. And we already got that uh, filter back in there, so we're good there. So let's pop this thing back on. So I've got a little bit of plumber's grease here and We're gonna put a little bit of that Here on the seal area because I don't want to rip my gasket. I want it to slide in nice and smooth it, uh, If it seats properly, it's less likely to leak Which there's not a whole lot of pressure on this. It's just whatever it's generating which I think is maybe 15 pounds 20 pounds at the most May not even be that much because it's not running at full speed. It's only running about 48 hertz area. It didn't seem to want to slide in very well without it. So we'll get that in there. Don't feel like grabbing the other camera. So I'm not going to be able to mount this one very easily. However, I might see if I can put it on the bag there. That way you can see me putting this pump in. So I look like monkey humping a football, I guess they call it. Up there like that. Can't tell if it's it doesn't feel like it's going in, but I don't know if this uh, seal actually slides right in or how it works, or if it just pinches between it. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to slide in between it. It's going to be started, and then we'll work it in. As you notice, if you look through some of the videos, obviously I could be working on a split system on a house. I could be working on a chiller that you hear running in the background. I could be working on a water pump. I don't just do one thing. I do not like doing the same crap every day. That's why I'll never be able to work in a factory. So we're gonna do this in slow. Let's drop this down to number one. to get on there with the pliers because I ain't got my bigger wrenches around the truck and we can see how tight it is. You can tell that if I can do it with a 10 inch wrench here that we're not over tight. So if you just went, oh my god, he's gonna break it, let's freaking impact. 
I wasn't born yesterday. So, yeah, my perfect new. Go ahead and open up this water and see if we have any leakage. This is kind of scary, but it's all right. We can do it. Let's see what happens here. Then I open this one. Look at that. Do we see water going anywhere? Is there any water leaking anywhere? I don't see any leaking. So, kind of backwashed that a little bit. Honest to goodnesses, let's flush this out a little bit. There you go. Get some of that crap out of there. Put that cap on there and let's kick this turd on as soon as we get her wired up. That just help that seal set down flat. Thing I've noticed with water, new seals like that, tighten it down, normal, turn on the water. If it leaks, tighten it up a little more. Over tighten it, causes it to leak. So we got a little problem here. This is on top, power comes in from the bottom. So what we're gonna try to do is switch this cover around and see if we can just move it, flip it like that, which looks like we should be able to do that. There we go. Got it switched around, and that is gonna fit up actually better than what the other one did. All right, if there's one thing I can give you a tip on, whenever you have these wires that have been put together and taken apart multiple times, cut off the strand at the end, if you have room for it, and restrip it. Because I've had several times, especially on a thermostat wire, where it ends up breaking off on you. So we've got it on there. I didn't bother looking at the numbers. It's a 50-50 chance on this. If it don't run in the right direction, we'll switch any two. Uh, this doesn't have, you know, the high leg, all those other things that we've got to worry about. Uh, if this is not a pump that's going to be damaged if it goes in reverse. If it was more of a critical type pump or a certain kind of compressor, I'd be checking phase rotation, things like that with my meter, which I have out in the truck. I just, it's easier to turn it on and see if it's building pressure. If it don't, then obviously we've got an issue. Now we've already got a gauge that's not worth a crap there because it's already out of whack. So we know that we're going to have about five pounds, four pounds, whatever starting out so so that's zero everything's wore out here still need to find out what's going on with this other little pump i don't know what it even goes to so there's that i hear a building and it don't sound right not building hear that noise it's running backwards sounds like rocks i had one and i'll never forget this now and it took me forever to figure it out the inverter supposedly for whatever reason something changed it was going reverse the pump would work fine in manual hand mode but not in re inverter mode so we've got that there let's go ahead let this thing completely power down verify the voltage is completely gone and then let's switch those legs around. Got it corrected. Let's go back over here. This was originally at 48, so let's put it back to 48. Locked in until it start. Starting to wind up. Wow, look at that. It's not like making a hell of a lot of noise and everything else. Says we are running 6.29 amps and at 48 hertz. So let's go down here and see if that's accurate. 6.1, 6.3, and I think that was it. 6.3. Let's look at the frequency. 48 hertz. I'd like to see your. Uh, cheaper meters do that all right let's go back see if it's a 6.2 yep look at that 6.2 6.3 it's fluctuating 
All right, well, we are building pressure. Look at that, happy nuggets. Let's see what happens with our cool water, which was what we originally were here for. So this heat exchanger was replaced. You got the boiler, hot water boiler coming in, going out, vice versa, whichever. Your modulating valve here is how it controls it. So now we should start seeing some water temperature differences. Yeah, we're already cranking up. Got, that ain't accurate. That is definitely not no 110 degrees. Nothing like faulty gauges, probably because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it don't look too good. Nice. Very, very nice. Yes, it can be tightened up, but I think the thing on the end's broke because, I mean, that's... Because I can feel this one's hotter and it's at 94. 93. That's nice. I always love to see wires hanging out the ass end of the motor. This is my Dectron unit, the small one, which at halftime don't run because it's got a leak. And my larger one is over there for the pool heat. So we are running. Well guys, I might just quit here on the video. I am going to shut the power down and put those wires back in there. That is 480. Never know. You could have a nick in the wire that you don't see and you get arc flash. So we're working on that dead. Go ahead and get these taped up, put back in the box. Appreciate you watching it. I know it's not my usual HVAC videos, but it is plumbing related, so it kinda is. We don't have any leaks up there. We don't have any leaks down here. So it looks like we've got it. Yippy skippy, not a, a big deal, but it is working. So anyhow, guys, I appreciate you watching. Check out Instagram, Facebook. If you guys like watching these for free, then you need to give it a thumbs up. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one.